Well, a few heartbeats will be racing when a cottage in the Cotswolds is up for grabs in Raise the Roof 8.15 tonight. Live boxing for you at 5 past 11, Billy Schwer defends his Commonwealth lightweight title against a chap from South Africa. Unpronounceable, I can't say it. Easy to say, though, is a blind date. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind to Date, and here is your host, Priscilla Black. Thank you, thank you. Hello, and welcome to Blind Date. <laughs> Well, you know, they say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and we've got three beauties here who'd bring a sparkle to any lad's eye. We've got Jane from Leeds, Lorna from Reading, and Amanda from Liverpool. Come in, the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to you in a minute, number two. <laughs> but hello, Jane from Leeds. Yes, hello. Now, Jane, what do you do up there in Leeds? Uh, I'm a nursery officer. I work for Leeds City Council for the under eight service. Ah. <laughs> so you look after little babies? Uh, they're not to five, but the virgin on the older age range at the moment. But, oh, um, they're getting, getting a, a bit, few are babies. They? Mm, they're going to school now. I'm losing all my babies. Aww. Aww. <laughs> well, you've come to the right show for babies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you love kids, obviously. Yeah. But you're yeah. not very good with fellas. I mean, in fact, you're a, you're a bit desperate. Desperado, aren't you? <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. She said I it, mind. It's all right. This is what she told me. <laughs> I'm not lying, am no, I? No, you're not silly, no. I know. I mean, you'll go out. And you give every fella your phone number on the town up there in Leeds, and he never phone her. No. <laughs> That's why you're desperate. Well, this is it, Silla. In fact, actually, I've, I've got to tell you, Silla, I have now stopped taking my pen and my paper out now to give the phone numbers out because nobody ever wants it. And when they do, you can see them. They say, you know, oh, I'll have your phone number. Yes, mm -hmm. and you give it to them, and then later on, you can see them like that, and they've chucked it. <laughs> What a shame, what a shame. They're very sad. But the men, I love the men in Leeds. I love the men in Leeds. Well, I but, wish you'd find me one. Well, no. <laughs> well, no, we haven't found a fella in Leeds, but we have got a lovely guy tonight. But the best of luck to you, Jane, all right? You, wish you well. Give my love to your mother, Andrea. I will do. Hello. Hello, Stella. Is that an at or what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I'll Thank borrow you. that. And next time we have a blind date wedding, <laughs> if I may. <laughs> if I may. Lorna, what do you do? I'm a baguette lady from Reading. I oh, sell baguettes and patisserie to business estates. You do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, you're a baguette lady? A baguette lady, that's how I'm known as. But in, yeah. our, in my lingo, you sell bussies. I, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> brought up on a different kind of sarny, weren't you? Oh, goodness, yes, Dandelion butties you were brought yeah, up on. Yeah, Well... <laughs> well, your dad, your dad was a bit like that, wasn't he? He was a bit of a botanist, my dad. He's a, a bit, bit of a of what? A botanist. Uh, oh, and that as well, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so he used to like picking our tea for us, and I used to go with him, safe going to the supermarket, so... Dandelion leaf sandwiches were on the agenda quite a lot. Well, may yeah. I say, Lorna, you look very healthy on your diet, <laughs> and I'll call in for a baguette <laughs> butty any time. All right. <laughs> Enjoy blind date. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Stella. From Liverpool. That's right. Yay! Yay! And what do you do in Liverpool? Well, Stella, I'm a graduate, but I'm tempting at the moment. But I'm looking for a sales position. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you come to the <laughs> show, got one. it's your job tonight to sell yourself. You Absolutely. realise that? Well, you can't. You can't find any fellas in Liverpool that can keep up with you. Amanda, no, they can't stay the pace. They can't last the distance. Why is that? What do you do? Well, I get on that dance floor and I just don't get off. I just want them to dance with me. Is it too much to ask? They're just dropping like flies. 
Oh, so you want a very healthy guy yeah. today? I, I kind of like Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> to ask for, is it? Well, no, except that he's a multi-millionaire, and I don't think we can run to multi-millionaires on this show. But you look going on holidays, you look very brown at the minute. You like cruising? I do. Yes. yes you've been on 20 cruises and you've not found romance yet? Not one under 60, no. Oh. <laughs> God knows I tried. <laughs> well, we've got a fella here on tonight's show that is definitely under 60. And he is beautiful. I don't know whether he's a Dolph or not. <laughs> Certainly he's in for a good time tonight with you three girls. Enjoy Blind Date. Thank you. Thank you. I shall see you in a moment. See you later. <laughs> Some lucky fella's in for a treat tonight, and here he is. His name's David, and he's from Hertfordshire. Come in, David! Lundgren, eat your heart out. <laughs> My goodness me, David, don't you look a treat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Didn't you have time to put your shirt on? I, didn't. <laughs> I was in such a hurry. But you look wonderful. Thanks. Oh, look, and I'm. <laughs> oh, it's all ever so hard here. It's wonderful. <laughs> Gorgeous. Now, David, I mean, you do look it. You are a model, aren't you? Yes. You have been in the Navy. Yeah, I have. Yes. And you actually did do Charlie, if you pardon the expression. Yes, just, just, <laughs> just to clarify the point, yes. it was When uh, you were in the Navy. Well, yeah. tell us why you did Charlie and who was he anyway? Well... <laughs> 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 what happened was... Uh, <laughs> I, I was a bit naughty in the Navy, and um, I was always doing things I shouldn't be doing, really. And right. I got caught once, and they made me get up at 4 o'clock every morning and run around the rugby pitch yeah. with a white belt on right. and a, some white gaiters and boots and things. Is that and that's, all? That's Charlie. <laughs> that's it. That's now I know why it's called Charlie. <laughs> you probably looked the right Charlie running around in white gaiters and... Never mind about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, David, you've got three questions, then. The mm. girls are dying. They're all waiting with bated breath. So fire away with your first question. OK. I like to work out uh, before a night out. So... <laughs> <laughs> it, gives me a, it gives me a bit of a buzz and gets me in the party mood. Number one, what last-minute touches do you use to get you in the party mood? <laughs> Hi, David. Hi. Baby. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the only touch that would get me in the party mood is to feel your biceps while you're working out. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Number three, how do you follow that one? Mmm, cunning question, David. Wow. Well, let me see. The disco can provide the lights, the paparazzi can provide the cameras, and, hey, baby, you and me can provide the action. Yes. <laughs> okay. And finally, number two. Well, I'm a bit of a hippie chick, so first of all, I'd chill out with an incense stick, slip into something floaty <laughs> with tie dye, and if you were to meet me at a party, I'm sure to promise you love, peace, and definitely happiness. <laughs> OK, my next question is, I used to be in the Navy, as you already know, and I was always getting into trouble, as you already know. Once I had to run around a rugby pitch at 4 a.m. for two weeks as a punishment, as you already know. <laughs> if I was a naughty boy, number one, <laughs> what punishment would you give me on our date? Well, David, as you don't already know, in my line of work, I, work, I deal with um, naughty little boys every day. <laughs> and and the, the punishment that I do with them would be to take away their favourite toy. But with me as the teacher, I'm sure you'd soon find something to play with. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> OK, number two. Well, hello, sailor. Hello. <laughs> I would have to make you walk the plank, but it wouldn't be much of a punishment because you'll definitely want to go overboard for me. Ah. Oh. And finally, number three, please. Mm. If you were naughty on our date, it wouldn't be a punishment, just pleasure, because in my book, naughty is nice. <laughs> OK, my idea of a romantic evening is Puccini, a huge open fire, and a four-poster bed. <laughs> Number two, what are your ingredients for the perfect romantic evening? Well, to complete our romantic evening, I'd have to bring along one of my pot noodles. You're definitely going to be potty about me, and we can canoodle the night away. Pot noodle. Pot noodle. And number three. Mm. For a Geordie, that's mm. not a bad choice. Well, my idea of a romantic evening would be on board the love boat, <laughs> with a cocktail in my hand, you by my side, <laughs> and a thrilling adventure ahead of us. Number one. Well, David, I think your ingredients sound absolutely terrific, but I'd just like to point one thing out. There's one ingredient that's missing to make your romantic evening, and, David, you've guessed that ingredient is me. Yeah! Oh. What can I say? Well, what can you say, David? I mean, that was all over in the quick as a flash, wasn't it's it? It's a toughie, though. It, it is a toughie. toughie, but you've asked all your questions mm. now. And it's making mind up time. And it's also our Graham time with that quick reminder. Graham, take it away. David, will you pick playful number one? She wants to feel your muscles and hopes she'll warm the cockles of your heart. <laughs> or how about floaty number two, the hippie chick who just wants to get you in the moodle to canoodle? <laughs> or how do you fancy action girl number three? Pick her and you can be as nautical as you like. The decision <laughs> is yours. Well, Go on, David. Close your eyes and pick a number. Number three. Number three. Well, you see, they have their favourites out here, but you did close your eyes and you did go for that number three. My goodness me. But the two that, that you turned down, oh, David, they're all crackers tonight, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. You turned down number one, and that was our Jane from Leeds. Oh, what a sweet <laughs> She's oh. lovely, isn't she? Lovely girl. You also turned down number two, and that was our Lorna from Reading. Wonderful. Oh, oh, she's oh, no, she's gone. Oh, Lorna, yes. But never mind, you chose a lovely blind date. Yes, you chose number three. That was our Amanda from Liverpool. Come in, Amanda. <laughs> Thinking you think you have died and gone to heaven, don't you? Girl? <laughs> Not all. Because <laughs> I have to say, you know, she did say she liked the Dolph Lundgren type. Very true, yes. Yes. You're not disappointed, are oh, you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to choose where you're going on your blind date? I'll see you. Oh, let oh. me see. Which one will it be? Okay, this one. Um, well, I have somewhere nice. Here we go. Fingers crossed. You suit lipstick, actually. <laughs> Do you like it? Yes, more on the front than me. A date to Tunisia. Oh, wow. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm so pleased for you. Oh, fantastic. 
brilliant. If you don't get on, I'll eat my ass. My wedding ass. <laughs> yes, you're just in a way to the exotic Tunisia for an Arabian adventure. <laughs> Ooh. You'll hit the beach and try the full range of water sports oh, on that. You're gonna round it all off with a traditional Tunisian banquet at a luxury hotel. Fantastic. I'm That's so brilliant. pleased Absolutely with the both of you. Thank you. And don't come back with that lipstick on again. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> David and Amanda, enjoy your blind Thanks, date. See you. to see how Jerry and Kiki enjoyed their gourmet date in France. And here's the moment they met last week. You chose number three, and that was our Kiki from Warrington. Come in, Kiki. <laughs> At People's Phone, you won't find any of these. Because every one of the 130 People's Phone showrooms specialises in one thing and one thing only. Mobile phones. In fact, People's Phone will give you more mobile phones to choose from than anyone else. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Very funny. People's Phone. Where talk is cheaper. 0345 10 11 12. Energy saving light bulbs. What's the point? I put this ordinary bulb in weeks ago and. <laughs> An energy saving light bulb could cut your lighting bill by £10 a year. You go by the Longy Dragon. Dragons. Dragon on. Dragon on. The DeLonghi Dragon portable oil filled oh. radiator. It heats the room faster than any other oil filled radiator and it comes with a five year guarantee. Oh. The DeLonghi Dragon. Extraordinary. To celebrate Disney's new film, Pocahontas, McDonald's Happy Meals are now $1.99. There are five toys to collect, a different one each week. McDonald's Happy Meals, now $1.99. Within two years, we double turnover. For a small company, we've done well. I was concerned that Ren would lose contact with the customer. If the client isn't satisfied, we'll refund the first three months' service fees. We now feel extremely confident. We've got great confidence in Alex Laurie. We work in partnership with the client. The sales link financing is able to concentrate on putting our energies in the right direction. I can put my mind to selling instead of chasing invoices. That's our goal, through the world's leading supplier of coffee mugs. 0800 55 0002. Weight Watchers from Heinz introduce new Chunky Ocean Pie. Made with the best durum wheat, tasty salmon and prawn tagliatelle. And a rich prawn curry. All have the flavor you expect of a range from Heinz. But because they're healthy recipes from Weight Watchers, all are low in fat. She never buys her own. Boarding tons, the cream of Manchester. Hello and welcome back. Well, let's join Jerry and Kiki enjoying the good life. Would you like me to get you some rooms? Okay. You've got to let me buy you something there later. Uh, that's cool. Okay. Could, could I have some roses for my rooms, please? <laughs> <laughs> <It's so corny. laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> Shall I wear it around my neck or do you want to wear it around your neck? <laughs> Which do you prefer? 
Put on my ankles. Put on my ankles. Do you like that? Yeah, this is very nice. Yeah, this really? Is not just saying it. No, I like studs. <laughs> well, a stud for my stud. <laughs> can you imagine King Henry II walking through these gardens? Yeah, I, I can imagine that chair very well. Wow, look at this beautiful hedge. It's fantastic. Yeah. I just love it bushes. Feels like how it reminds me. <laughs> We produce in, in this room, in this tea room, uh, 15 million bottles a year. Wow. And uh, we use very specific ingredients. Uh, bitter orange from uh, Haiti okay. and sweet oranges from uh, Spain and Brazil. And we produce this alcoholate, uh, which will be uh, refined uh, in order to obtain the flavor of Quinto. Oh, you get to taste some. That's a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Bottoms up. He's looking at you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry and Kiki did all that French food give you an appetite for love, or was romance? Not on the menu. Shall we find out? <laughs> when the screen went back, I was so excited and bowled over that Jerry could have looked like Quasimodo for all I cared about. <laughs> I didn't see anything. I was, I was, you know, the veil was in my face and all the lights and everything. I was just so overexcited. When the screen went back and I saw Kiki standing there in a wedding dress, <laughs> I may have given a facial expression that said I was disappointed. But that wasn't the case. I was only surprised to see her there in a wedding dress. Uh, very surprised to see her. There. Oh, physically, God, I mean, I was, I was so impressed because he's so handsome. <laughs> so yeah, he was a very handsome man. After the show, went for a very nice meal in London, and Kiki was still wearing the wedding dress. As soon as we walked into the, to the restaurant. Uh, I thought maybe my head was cut off or something. Because we definitely turned a lot of heads. We're on the train through the Channel Tunnel, and I'm reading our stars. And in my stars, it says, uh, um, "Don't expect too much today because you're going to be disappointed." And I looked at Jerry and, and looked at my stars, and he said, "Well, um, what did you expect?" And I said, "Well, I suppose I expected a glass of champagne on the train when we got <laughs> got on." And I looked away, and within seconds, there was two bottles of champagne in front of me. Oh. As far as for me being a gentleman on the date with Kiki, was if rather or not that was an, uh, a put on or an act. No, I am a gentleman. You know, oh. that's in my I don't know any other way to do it when it comes to ladies. Because I wasn't sure about how I felt about Jerry, I think I did put up a barrier and didn't respond to. I didn't flirt with him, I don't think. When we talk about Kiki and signals that I was getting, I think I was getting like an amber light, not a full green one. You can like someone and find them extremely attractive and see all their qualities and not want to snog them. And I think that's how it was with Jerry. Oh. Kiki and I are definitely going to keep in touch and plan on seeing each other again. I mean, this is just part one, so stay tuned for part two. Well, Kiki and Jerry, I have to say, Kiki, especially you, I'm a bit confused, really, because you think he's wonderful, he's gorgeous-looking, and he's a perfect gentleman, but somehow you're a wee bit hesitant there, weren't you? Why is that? Well... I don't know. It's just something, something I can't put my finger on, really. I, um, <laughs> I mean, you, you, sometimes it's just something chemical and you don't know what, what happens, but it's just pow. I mean, maybe it's time, but I, I don't really know. I can't answer that question. 
You can't, oh, what a shame, oh, because Jerry, she frightened you a little bit. I mean, you said about when she walked around those screens and was wearing that wedding dress. You know, you really, I mean, you did get a little bit nervous there. I mean, you he was thought, horrified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit is an understatement, so a little bit is an understatement. Yeah. Well, what did you think? Do you think you could handle this lady? Well, yeah, I like a challenge. You know, so. <laughs> I, I didn't perceive a problem. You don't? No. Well, you bought you roses, which yeah, you found. Yeah, that was, that was lovely. And yeah. I bought him, I bought him a she collie. A I know, yeah, yeah, what's the hidden meaning? You yeah. bought him a collie. <laughs> a cauliflower. A cauliflower, yeah, what's the... <laughs> I mean, what's the psychology behind that? Why a collie? Well, because m mon petit chou means my little... Mon petit chou, yeah. Yeah, it means my little cauliflower. Little cauliflower. And I didn't know how to say my little orchid in French, so we got a cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> and, uh, he lost it. He mislaid his cauliflower. You lost your collie. <laughs> well, that's all you lost, isn't it, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> but the night is yet young, and I, you both said there on film you would like to keep in touch and see oh, each other again. Mm -hmm. But would this be on a romantic level? Um, well, if it's not a romantic level with me, I'm, all my friends are interested in Jerry anyway. <laughs> Well, his friends are interested in me. That's so not great. what I asked. But what, <laughs> how do you feel? I'd be cut to the quick. Well, as far as Kiki goes, uh, you know, like I said, it's a sequel to this. <laughs> well, I hope so. Will you let me know what part two is all about? <laughs> Definitely so. Thank Definitely. you both very much Thank for coming you. back on Blind Date, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kiki and Jess. <Jeff. laughs> take another break right now, but we will be back to meet the girl who has to pick one of these three hopeful fellas. Paul from Reading, Nick from New Zealand, and Jeff from Birmingham. <laughs> See you in a couple of minutes. He'll take good care of that, just like Boots Opticians did with me. Very thorough eye test. The optician made it clear exactly what was right for me. As for frames, it was good to get some advice. Decided on a designer pair. After all, everything in their promotion's half price. Nice to know someone else cares about my eyes. That's really worth something. Half price frames at Boots Opticians. We care because you do. Ah, I see you're about to eat a new Fray Bentos deep filled pie. But what is deep? The pulses of Sart are deep. Cognitive dissonance with one's guru can be deeply deep. But the deepness of so much lean steak and tender kidney topped with 64 layers of delicate pastry. Can this be said to be deep in the true Aristotelian sense? Ah! Great Ben just pies. Eat them. You can't beat them. Ah, now this well is deep. Oh, this one's cheaper. I think twice, old son. It's bread. Don't let the wife hear you. She's particular about Kingsmill, with bigger slices made from finer flour and baked longer. Hi, boys, I'm home. Well, well. So you actually bought Kingsmill? Would I buy you anything else? Talk about two-faced. Kingsmill. It really is better bread. Safeway's ABC card is the only supermarket loyalty card that gives you money off your shopping or something worth even more. If you think I'm going to settle for that when there's a Mr. Blobby cake up there, you'd better think again. It's the only supermarket loyalty card that offers you savings on family days out. Well, I reckon we should go for the free family cinema ticket, but you can't snog mum in the back row. It's in the small print, see? And whether you decide on a free product, a free service, or money off, it couldn't be easier to use. Gonna look after Mummy's ABC card. Um, you haven't got one with the whole alphabet on, have you? ABC, the card of choice. 
Hello, Willie. Say sausages. Come on. Rolls. No. Sausages. Rolls. Sausages. Rolls. Sausage. Thick, meaty sausages are pronounced walls. He, he wouldn't say sausages. Walls. Now you're talking sausages. Well, let's go meet our three lads, Paul, Nick and Jeff. There they are. <laughs> well, hello, Paul. Hello, Scylla. Now, Paul, tell everybody what you do out there. I'm a firefighter and I'm from Reading. Oh. Well, Paul, may I say so, it's a very worthwhile job that you do, and you can rescue me any time. <laughs> I mean, you do a very serious job, I know, but it does have its lighter moments, oh, I hear. Moments. Yeah. I mean, tell us about, I mean, because you only hear about these things. Well, we've got the one about the bath lady, if you want to hear that one. Oh, please, tell us about the bath lady, right, we... you know, a bit of muck. We like muck, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> no, we get this shout, and there's... On the tip sheet, it's like lady stuck in the bathroom. We just think she's locked in there, so we get there, and um, the door's open. Woman in the bath. With a towel around her, by the way. And um, the feet are caught in the, in the taps. <laughs> so we think, oh, my God, are we going to get her out of this situation? And there's a guy that obviously let us in the house, and the next minute the phone uh, rings. He legs it downstairs, and um, he comes back up, all red face, and spoke to the boss. He said, you've got to get her out. The wife's coming home. You've got to get her out. <laughs> right, lads, in you go. Get the old dirty worm, cut the taps off. <coughs> Cut her down the stairs. Be careful, be careful where we put our hands, you know. <laughs> and um, got her in, in her car. The guy took her home, and we never heard from him until the next day. He comes in the station and says, Oh, thanks, lads, you got me out of a real sticky situation there. I mean, what was the feet doing stuck up the taps in the first place? Use imagination, silly. Yeah. Well, I will, I will, but I'm a bit old for that. She's now. cleaning the inside of the taps. <laughs> she was, but cleaning the, the inside of the taps. With her feet. Yeah. Enjoy blind date, Thank you. Paul. Oh, you look well. lovely. Hello, Nick from New Zealand. Hello, Silla. My goodness, me. <laughs> Now, what do you do, Nick? I'm a sales manager for a hotel chains. Yes, and you have brought the first ten years of your life, your young life, I believe, you lived in Fiji. That's correct. <gasps> Aren't you lucky? Yes, oh, goodness sorry. me. What was life like there? Uh, it, was, it was fairly, fairly nice in the tropics. Very easy Good, going. Pretty easy. But you've, got, back. you've got three elder brothers and they were nasty to you one day. Well, I have, they? yes, yes. Someone's in obviously Fiji. been telling you little stories. And... Yes. And you <laughs> tell it to us because we're dying to hear it, aren't we, gang? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, having three older brothers, uh, one day I was there, my father's out painting the fence with bright green paint. And I was, as a young lad does, when you're knee high, looking at my reflection in the pot of paint and staring all sort of wide eyed in the paint. And uh, my brothers got the urge, seized my by the ankles, and dunked me in the tin of paint <laughs> up to my waist. Ah, oh, what a shame! From... And your, your mother had to take you to the hospital, didn't she? She did. She that put was... me in one of those large old-fashioned prams, rushed me off down <laughs> through the naval compound, down off to the hospital to get hosed down. Passed a uh, very important meeting, which my father, being a high-ranking naval officer, was in <laughs> to see his son going past, looking like an old green operation. <laughs> Well, we wish you a laurel look. All right, Thanks sweetheart. So much. See you in a mo. Thanks. Well, what can I say? Oh. <laughs> ah. Well, this is our Jeff from Birmingham. I mean, you're a little ambitious, aren't you? Oh, I certainly am. I'm looking forward to getting away, aren't I? Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Look, I'm a big bird. Hey! <laughs> Everybody's dying to know what you do. I've got a car valeting business back in Birmingham. Oh. Yeah. But you, you, I mean, you're not short of girls. I mean, there's one particular girl that you took away oh, to a certain hotel. A nice romantic to weekend, impress I thought. Her. That's right, to impress her. And what happened? After the meal, I thought, oh, we're going to have a dip in this pool and have going to a jacuzzi, this, that, and the other. Jacuzzi? Here we go. Oh, jacuzzi. See? <laughs> right now, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get me excited. Go on. I'll get too excited. And I thought, right, a little swim, got in a jacuzzi, nobody else there. Great, sat there, pressed this. Press that. I said, come on, press something, make the bubbles work. I said, you know, press what you like. <laughs> Turn and slide that, an attendant walks past. He comes in, he says, uh, excuse me, can I help you? I said, yeah, do you get the bubbles working in the, in the jacuzzi? He said, I'm sorry, sir, that's the kiddie's paddling pool. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. All right, lads, 
Enjoy Blind Date. See you all in the mo. Thank See you later. <laughs>
cognitive cybernetics. <laughs> Davina, I'm so pleased you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided it wasn't sufficiently intellectually challenging for me. <laughs> so how would you keep me intellectually stimulated on our day? <laughs> Can you say that again, please? <laughs> oh, and intellectually, um, intellectually, um, intellectually stimulate you with my skills as a pyrotechnical terminator. <laughs> Which basically means I'm a fireman. There's more, there's more, come here, there's more. Like but in your case, I make an exception and I keep the flames of passion burning all night long. Oh, wow. <laughs> you like it before? Oh, I love them. I love them, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, the next question to number two. Okay, Davina, I would uh, stimulate you with my knowledge on the solar system and planetary movements. You being my star, and I'll be your heavenly body. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. <laughs> right, same question to number three. I think, to be honest, I'm on the wrong show because... <laughs> <laughs> if, I had to, uh, if I had to intellectually stimulate you, I'd have gone on Mastermind, and then after you'd picked me, you'd be my specialist subject. Oh. <laughs> right, my third question. Final question. I work in telesales, which means I spend all day chasing men who are often tied up, otherwise engaged, or bluntly say no. If you were on the phone trying to sell yourself to me in one line, what would that be and why? And that can go to number three. I'm a sports little number, excellent bodywork, good runner, and I want one fast lady owner. Yeah. Right, number two. Okay, Davina. Also, uh, myself, I'm also in tele sales, so I know exactly what you have to go through and put up with and what the problem is. The, what I do is I'm in the hotel business, so if you care to check me out, we'll check in together and close this five star deal. Oh, okay. And my final question to number one. Well, Davina, I would, I would say I'm strong, well-built, mm. viewing is essential, and no appointment necessary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Davina, it's make your mind up time. I know. Don't tell us just yet, because here's our Graham with a quick recap. Davina, will you be dating pirate technical number one? He doesn't want to set the world on fire. He just wants to start a flame in your heart. <laughs> but you would prefer Kiwi number two. After hearing his New Zealand love song, does it inspire you to Maori him? <laughs> or how about mastermind number three? He hopes he's scored maximum points with you. And no passes. The decision is yours. Thinking long and hard there, Chuck. It's difficult, they're all lovely. I know they are. Yeah. But you've got to make your mind up. You've got to pick one. Who's it going to be? I think it's going to be number two. You did. You did. You just tell me it was the accent that sold you. The New Zealand accent and indeed the New Zealand love song, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely. But what about number three who you turned down? My goodness me. Yeah, the audience love him. It was our Jeff from Birmingham. Come in, Jeff! Good luck with your career. I will do. Give my love to Birmingham.
Will you? Will I? I bet you I will. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. And what about number one? You're going to kick yourself. You oh, like men in uniform. It's beautiful. Oh, you turned down our Paul from Reading. Come in, Paul. Oh, oh, he's disappointed. Are you disappointed? Not yet. No, you won't. <laughs> Not yet. Well, I hope you won't be, Davina, because here's your blind date. All oh, the way from you. New Zealand, you chose number two. That was Nick. Come in, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of my girl here? Um, well Who's going to choose where you're going on your blind date? Thanks, the lady. Oh, the lady. Can you I choose who you read? Uh, yes. Can't you read? Oh, that's, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. All right, David, you've been brilliant tonight. Here we go. Sure. What does it say? We're off up to a trip to Yorkshire. Oh. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Have you been to Yorkshire? No. Well, how do you know it's better than Blackpool? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Yorkshire now. I mean, it's going to be sorry. wonderful. <laughs> Look, you're off to the beautiful Bronte country. Have you been up there? I mean, you must have been no, everywhere. No. Oh, well, you no, see, it's a first for both of you. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, you're going to be staying at a stunning country house. It's a hotel deep in the Yorkshire Dales. Oh, lovely. And you're going to take part in a sheepdog trial. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, what, you're allergic to dogs? Yeah, I'll start sneezing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, look at this. You're going to try your hand at falconry. <laughs> I know what that was. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. You're petrified of birds. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just stay in the hotel. Do you want to start again? <laughs> Vulcan. Oh, look at this, but you're going to enjoy this. You're going to stay at the most fabulous hotel. Oh. <laughs> well, at least that's something, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to have the five star treatment. Oh, wicked. <laughs> Not only on our date, but from you as well, because you did so, you Aww. said so in one of your replies, and it'll be a wonderful time. It will time be lovely. Yeah. You yeah, will come back next week. Of course, week. We will. Sneezes and all. <laughs> Petrified from all the birds, all the eagles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wish them both well, Davina and Nick. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, last week, Liz and Austin spent their blind day flying high in the sky. Hi, Glenn Curtis. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. Hi, pleased to okay, meet you. Okay, I know you've had your safety briefing, but just a couple of points I'd like to reiterate before we go out to the helicopters. Main thing around helicopters is the rotors will be running. Please, never around the back of the helicopter, okay? You've got your tail rotor, spins very, very fast, okay, and it's quite low down. Get too close to it, you end up like that. Yeah? Put your bow on these tenders, Glenn. That's it, you got it, okay. <laughs> Let's go.
out for your helicopter. Oh. I'm just going to have a roll out here. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Ready? Go away. Well, what a fantastic day, wasn't it, Liz? Yeah, it was great. And Austin now did love make you go dizzy and weak at the knees, or was it just the altitude? Let's find out. When the screen went back and I first saw Liz, I think um, my initial reaction was that was relief uh, because Liz was a normal-looking person; she wasn't a two-headed monster. <laughs> and uh, and then pleasant surprise because Liz was good-looking, or <laughs> she is good-looking. When I looked at Austin, I didn't go for. The four factor was not really there for me. When we actually got on the date, Liz wasn't quite as enthusiastic about it as I was. And I think I would have preferred her to be happier about having gone with me and about having gone to Buckinghamshire. I think Austin fancied me more than I fancied him. <laughs> uh, I didn't consider him opening moves, no. It would have all been a little bit too fast. Austin did try to make a few moves on me, yes. But, um, <laughs> Liz talks about herself uh, a lot, <laughs> which is all very interesting. But um, I think I'd have liked to have been included in the conversation a little bit more. <laughs> when it came to the conversation, I think um, it was a two-way thing. Liz has got a, a job in media production, and I'm a documentary student from Hull. Um, but I think the problem lay in that, that I was a student. And although we were compatible, because we were doing a similar sort of thing, she doesn't like students very much. I normally go out with guys that are, are reasonably successful and, um... <laughs> One of the best bits of the date was, was seeing Liz sitting in the tiger moth. Very nervous. Green. <laughs> and that showed a weaker side, which I hadn't previously seen. That was very interesting. When it came to the flying, I don't think I was nervous at all. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. It was really exhilarating. I would like to try and stay in contact with Liz. Trouble is that Liz won't actually leave London. We went on our date to Buckinghamshire, and that was too much of a countryside event for her. Um, <laughs> she's coming to a party, hopefully, with me next month in London, so she doesn't have to leave. For me, um... Twinkle in the eye and a personality can make the ugliest person beautiful in my eyes, and that just didn't happen to me with Austin. <laughs> oh. Oh, Liz. oh, Liz, how could you say that last remark? I mean, what did you imply by that? You know, a twinkle in the eye. That must have ugly been... person. No. Beautiful. He's gorgeous. Yes, undeniable. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, did you make any romantic moves on our Liz here, Austin? At I'm, all? No, none at all. I think I'm. Oh, you liar! <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, you did say this on film. She did say on film that you did make quite a few moves in her dreams. <laughs> Oh, you didn't. You no, didn't. No, absolutely well, not. Can no. we get to the bottom of this, Liz? I mean, how? In what way did he make a move on you? Only slightly. We went out for a meal, and we were watching telly on my bed. <laughs> and he said he wanted a hug. Things along those lines. Oh. You can't deny it. You can't deny it. You know it's true. <laughs> so did you? Did you give him a hug? We had a hug. Uh, a hug, and that's, that's, a, that's about it. Uh. Would you be prepared to leave London 
with Austin here on a date. Yes, I'd like to see yeah. Austin again. Definitely. And are you going to keep that party date after tonight, Austin? What I do don't you think? think so, no. No. <laughs> 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 Well, you've done it now, Liz. So we had, we had the best time of our lives. I mean, yes. I had, I personally, yeah. I had a fantastic time. But uh, as far as Liz is concerned, I think there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Oh. <laughs> Austin, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> the, the thing well, I is... I think he's got his own back now, anyway, hasn't yes, he? Yes, definitely. Yes. Well, the thing is, I'm upset, cos I look forward to weddings, you see. <laughs> I don't think you'll be wearing hat. your hat, so I, I know, I know. Your hat will remain in its box. No, it's widow's reeds, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so sorry that you didn't get on romantically, or you didn't even get on, basically. <laughs> uh, but thank you both for coming back on Blind Date and sharing your thoughts with us, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Liz and Austin. But we will be back next week to see how David and Amanda and Davina and Nick enjoyed themselves. And of course, we'll be arranging some more blind dates. So until then, ta for now. Ta-ra <laughs>